discuss what are we do, how, what are we doing, how are we trying to um, like be exactly what God has called us to be. Are we the church that is producing fruits? Are we producing fruit to God, to the Father? Or are we the church that, that is envious of one another? Because that's, that happens in the church a lot. It happens a lot in the church. Okay? I remember um, growing up, I used to, even before the Lord called me, I was like, no, this is not for me. When the Lord called me, I was like, this is not for me. You know, and my calling is not that I just felt like becoming becoming a preacher and then I went to therapy. It, it happened dramatically. One, one of these days I will share my life. My testimony. It, it was so dramatic, sir. You know, I, I literally cried out to for God to heal me. I had a pain in my body. I cried out for God to heal me. And, and when he, when the revelation came through a, through a vision like a trance, I fell asleep, and the revelation came, and and, and uh, a Bible verse came, like openly, Luke chapter four verse eighteen, and I read it. I was like, me, why, like, you know, I. I used to go party, party. And I, I was a young man who was, who was full of life, going and partying and clubbing and chasing after the girls. Do you understand? Lord, are you, what, are you telling me that I have to go and start telling those young people that is a man who died for them 2,000 years ago, but somehow by their blood they are saved? They're going to laugh me to scorn. Do you understand? I was like, God, this is not for me. This is meant for some special people. You know, those people with degrees, those people I see on TV. Those special pastors, mm -hmm. you understand? That when, when they are coming, the whole, mm -hmm. everybody bow, and it, it, this is meant for them, it's not meant for me. It's not for me. I don't mind talking to maybe one or two people, that, you know, about and say, oh, God is real, oh, God is real. You understand? But it's not for me. Do you understand? And, and, and then I remember having all this, expecting things to be a certain way in the church. Do you understand? Expecting a certain level of holiness in the church as a, as, a, as a young boy growing up because I already condemned myself that I was not holy enough But I expected some kind of Recording in the church. Do you understand me, sir? And, and, and when I went to the churches back then, I didn't see those things Do you understand? You know, rather the church was trying to make, make me Somehow doubt my principles in God, you know, those things. I was a Catholic I was growing, I grew up as a Catholic in the Catholic Church. They still fear of God in me. And then I, I came to, to to Europe, and then I was going to some churches, right? Some believing Bible believing churches, and they're making me feel comfortable in my sin. Do you understand? So so it, it made me question, and I was saying, the Bible is saying one thing, and I'm seeing another thing in the church. Why does it have to be this way? Do you understand? The, the, the Bible is telling me that if I fornicate, that that I'm, I'll end up in hell. Yet, the pastor, the pastor then is trying to make me feel okay in my, in my sin. That, that I'm saved. Right? Once saved, always saved. Do you understand? It, 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 For them, I'm saved. <laughs> you know, it, it was trying to downplay. I, I, and you understand? I expected that when I go to church, as a young man, inquisitive, you understand? I, I expected that, that in the church, people would at least tell you the truth. Do you understand? Yeah, they should at least tell you, tell you the truth. If I if I'm doing a business with somebody, let them at least be honest with me. You know, I expected those things, but I didn't see it in the church. As a young man growing up, I didn't see it. Are you with me? I expected that in the church, when you say the word, let your word be, let your yes be your yes. When you make me a promise, stand by your promise. Don't go tomorrow. Don't come tomorrow and try to bend what you said and try to manipulate me. But that, those are the things I saw in the church. Do you understand? And, 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 and it was like a struggle, a, a struggle, a continuous struggle that made me fall into sin. Do you understand? A, a, a struggle that made me fall. And, and it didn't help as well that I was listening to a lot of messages on, about carnality, about pleasing the flesh, about, oh, five steps to, to your blessings. Oh, do, do you understand? Do you understand? It didn't help that I was listening to messages on, on oh, the Lord, the Lord is going to bless you mightily. Oh, come and sow this seed. This, this. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with sowing the seed, but sow it with knowledge. Do you understand? 
So I, it didn't help that, that I was listening to messages that made me want to enjoy the world more so than I want to enjoy the presence of God. Do you understand this? You know? it, didn't, it didn't help back then as a young man. And because of those things, I fell into sin. I remember in 2012, 2011, uh, 2012, when I fell into sin. I remember after my baptism, I promised God that I'm going to live a life of holiness. I'm going to live a life separated unto you. I'm not going to allow distractions to come in my way. You understand? And, and, and if you go God revealed to me that there was a distraction coming my way, because uh, there was guys who had a, a car coming. I was driving and a, a car coming, and then I, I, I saw some girls, and I looked, and then I lost it. I lost control. I was about to buy up the road and a car was coming with speed to hit me. Then I regained consciousness. I was asleep and saw a hand was driving the car, controlling the car, going. And then when I woke up eventually, I was like, wow, I took I took over the steering wheel and before I got to my destiny. That was a warning, there was a temptation coming ahead. There was a temptation, a temptation ahead. Because my eyes was were not on the right things. Right? Mm. Do you understand? So it didn't help then that I was listening to those pastors who were making me feel good in my sin. You understand? And they were church goers. And they were pastors. These are the things I saw in the church. They were Christians. They were making me feel, feel comfortable in my sin. I didn't feel convicted by the Holy Spirit. Their messages left me even emptier. It even left me more empty on the inside. I didn't feel convicted. I, I didn't, I was in sin. And you know, when, when, when a voice comes and tells me that this is wrong, I will go and listen to messages. The messages are, of the pastors are saying another thing. The voice of God is telling me that uh, it, got so, it got so bad that one day I, I, I was going to church. I sat in the car with a person. Uh, with, with, uh, with some the person that was giving me a little car. And there was a Bible verse playing on that very day. That is that I was I was already being convicted of my sin, even though I wanted to blot it out. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because of all the wrong teachings I've been listening to, you know. And, and the voice, the, 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 that sound keep, keep, kept on hammering on sexual sin. Mm -hmm. You understand? Hammering on it. I tried to ignore it. And when we were going back again, the same thing was playing. <laughs> so so I, I was already getting convicted. And when I went to a brother of mine called me. He said, there's a video I want you to watch. There's a video I want you to watch right now. Is that right? And then I went and listened to that message about uh, the guy called John Molina, you know, about his temptations, about how God rebuked him harshly. God told him that if he was to return today, you're not going to come, to come with me, even though you're a pastor, even though you're leading the flock, even though you're, you're, you're leading every, your, your, your sheep and, and bringing them to fasting and praying, if, if the Lord was to come today, he will not go. I will not take you with me. He, he called him John, beloved. I, I called him before the shall foundation of the earth. But if I were to return today, he will not come with me. And, 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 and this, this pastor was asking, asking the Lord, what is it? What, uh, as far as I know, I'm, I'm living a good life. And the Lord said, do you not know that fornicators will not enter, go into the kingdom of heaven? And he said, no, I don't do that. I don't practice such. And, it, and, and the Lord opened everything to him. And he, he was as if he was just walking in it. The Lord just brought him to places where he lost it. How he's lost it after the sisters in the house. How, you understand? He brought him, he was open before him. The sin that he, he was committing. And he was telling him about even those small, small things. The envy. And it, oh, that church is, oh, my church has to be the best. Do yeah. you understand? Oh, oh, and, uh, oh, that church is not doing so well. I'm happy that that church is falling. We, became, we become witches in the house of the Lord. We want another church to go down, to close, that we may grow. You understand? We want the work of God to die somewhere else, that we may do well. Do you understand? We want to come that way in the church. So when the Lord looks at the church, he's asking, hey, is this the bride that I die for? Is this the perfect bride? He, he went through the pains of narrating the, the activities of, of, of the bride, what the bride is expected to do. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that makes the question, are we this bride? Or is, are there ways that we can improve? Do you understand? 
And I asked myself that question every day. I cannot stand here and say that I, that I know this thing, I know I'm perfect. I cannot stand here now and say, say that I'm practicing these things. I'm not. But every day I ask myself this question, Lord, is it not every day? I'm not going to stand here and lie either. I say that every day I ask myself. But I ask myself this question continue, like, as often as possible. Lord, is there anything in me that is, is displeasing me? Because I might not know it. I might not know it. Outsiders might be able to see it or me and they can say it. Lord, the fact that once in a while I, I take a glass of wine so that I can sleep at night. Is that displeasing? Do you understand? I ask myself those questions. I'm not going to stand here and lie and be a hypocrite. Do you understand? The, no, the, the fact that sometimes uh, uh, some things, there are some things that might come into my mind, even unforgiveness. I might be driving somebody to cut me off right now, and I want to get a quick revenge. I, I, I want to get a quick revenge. I, I want to show them. Do you understand? So those things, those little, little things that I'm doing, I might consider them little, but is it displeasing the Lord? You understand? So this is what I, what I ask the Lord every day. That's what I ask of the Lord every single day of my life. I'm not going to stand in the claim and be a hypocrite. You understand? So the question to us then, are we the perfect?